Hey, YouTube, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click that bell because today we are talking about real NFL football, the opening matchup, Kansas City Chiefs, Houston Texans, and we break down some mailbag questions. Don't miss a moment. This season, get football on your time with NFL Game Pass. You can catch every snap from every game with full game replays and see all plays in just 45 minutes with condensed games. You'll learn from the league's best players in over 40 film session episodes and get access to the entire NFL Films archive. Go to nfl.com slash game pass to start your free trial today. NFL Game Pass, where football never stops. Hey, this is John Taylor, running back for the Indianapolis Colts, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah! Welcome in. Wednesday, September 9th. One day to football. Mm. Football Eve. Football Eve. Today <laughs> is football Eve. Actually, more importantly, today is the League of Record draft. How you doing, Jason? I'm pretty well. How are you? You're pretty well? He's yeah, good. Superman's good. <laughs> I think he's, your mastery of the English language knows no bounds, Mr. Moore. Thank you. Uh, Mike, the fantasy hitman, right, is here as well. I'm Andy Holloway. We're the fantasy footballers, and we are one day from NFL mm. football. Mm. Got done with hard knocks last night. Uh, that was, you know, it's uh, exciting to see basically anything related to football at this point. That's true. I did not make the team, mm. either team. I did. Knock. I did make one of those yes. teams. They didn't show me at all, but and I changed my number to eleven, which is my favorite number. Jason Moore, wide receiver for the Los Angeles Chargers. Watch out, twenty twenty. <laughs> I we were just talking before. Yeah. I wish that we had seen more football. Like I would have loved to see one. Cam Akers snap or one Josh We did. Kelly we saw snap. Cam Akers fumble. We yeah. saw one from like, fumble. Yeah, just a little bit more of some of these, you know, on the edge fantasy football talent type of sure. opportunity I, guys. I really liked the the Rams scrimmage from this past episode with that sweet Tyler Higby touchdown. Yeah. Well, he's a good player. Yeah. Gonna <laughs> score a lot of touchdowns. At the FF Ballers on Twitter. TheFantasyFootballers.com. Lots of changes on the website. Um, if you're a member of the Foot Clan, join the Foot.com. Uh, the Megalobowl drafts wrapped up last night. Uh, Jason and I both were in one of those, much to the surprise of the other people in the league, which was a lot of fun. Yeah, Andy and I jumped on the uh, the, old, the old sleeper voice chat there. That was really Ooh. fun. And had a party with people who were like, I don't think it's you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was the hardest part. They're like, yeah, it's not you. I had to tweet out my first three picks and then show them. Oh, to prove it? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> you, would, you like held up the newspaper, right. proof of Ex life? Exactly. <laughs> uh, but you can get access to premium projections, the flex rankings, the uh, advanced start sit tool, some of the player profile modules open up for you. So there's a lot of cool stuff on the website. The start sit tool is up there for the upcoming week is upgraded as well. Yes. Not only will it show you, you know, which players, even across positions, you could do up to four if you're uh, part of our Foot Clan community. And now it shows matchup details. It's going to show each player side by side what their projected lineup. Are they favored? Are they underdogs? Is it a high over under? What's, what is the matchup? It's, it's a really great tool. You're going to love it this season. Yeah, we're very excited. Lots of upgrades on the site over the last year overall, so it's it's nice. And what else is going on? YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Subscribe over there, click the bell. Appreciate everybody with the reviews lately on Apple Podcasts as we head into the season. Those are awesome. So let's go ahead and get into some buy sell. Buy or sell presented by Pristine Auction. All right, week one edition of Buy or Sell. We're starting with uh, 
Oh, goo goo good juice. Darren Waller, five and a half catches at Carolina. What do you think? Ooh. He averaged 5.6 catches per game in 2019. In fact, the other day when I pulled up his player profile and I was talking to Jason about Mr. Waller, I just, I think we forget the kind of season he actually had. Yeah, it, he has. 1,145 receiving yards from a tight end, 90 receptions. He has definitely been lower on the talked about players, but it, a lot of factors went into that over the off season. I mean, number one, the team spent, you know, everything trying to uh, revitalize and revamp that wide receiver core. Rugs in the first round, Brian Edwards in the third. At the time, Lynn Bowden was added also in the third. Like they've just, they've really tried to add some pieces. So it felt like, can Darren Waller really hit that same ceiling? And then on top of that, the draft, uh, the, the the ADP for Darren Waller, it's right in that dead zone four tight ends where they you just time after time after year after year we see them the fail fifth, six round yeah you you they fail to come through i still like waller in in his prospects but that's that's what happened to him he he fell into this bermuda triangle in the draft spot for for tight ends so are you going to take buying the or over? selling taking so, the over i this game is going to be wild man like carolina breaking out the brand new offense see what the new pieces can do for the Panthers and and what head coach Matt Jaw Rule can do, I will I will reluctantly buy this because we're still trying to get the the rookies going, which which they were listed as the starters, Henry Ruggs and Brian Edwards. So I I'll buy that the the seasoned veteran will be more involved week one. Yeah, I'm I'm going to buy it as well. Our projected stat line for him is six point two receptions this week. Um, I'm going to go with that. I, I could definitely see a world where Josh Jacobs just scorches the football field so badly that they don't need to throw the ball much against this Panthers defense. Right. But outside of that, the rookies coming in, this is their first game in the NFL. I think they're going to lean on Waller. I'm going to buy it as well. Lev Bell, 13 fantasy points at Buffalo week one. He averaged 12.1 fantasy points in 2019. I'm going to sell that. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to sell it. I'm going to sell it as well. Uh, look, if you drafted Lev in the fourth, I'm I'm still going to play him. I just am. Um, we've had to adjust our expectations for Le'Veon Bell over the past two weeks as Adam Gaze has, you know, done his thing here with Frank Gore. Yeah, yeah. he he's he knuckle pucked us. Yes, he did. Yeah, we're we're kind of in a daze, an Adam Gaze daze. Oh, gaze days. Um, yeah, no, I'm I'm definitely selling. This is a you should have made that line ten points, Brooks. That oh, would have yeah. been tough. Ten points would have been tough. You are well, terrible at at handicapping, Brooks. <laughs> yeah. What if it was ten points, guys? Oh, oh. Buy yourself, what a great buy or sell ten points. Because I fire. I would buy ten points. I think he can get ten against Buffalo with the passing. Uh, what's the scoring format here? <laughs> it's a half point PPR, Jason. Okay. All right. Um. I'm gonna sell. Sell you're gonna sell ten? Nine point nine. I I I don't want to play him against Buffalo with Frank Gore. I, he's just worrisome to me. Mike, would you buy or sell at ten points? Uh, I would sell. I think like to me the question becomes can Le'Veon Bell hit ten points this week without a touchdown? Sure. And then now you're like, ah, I don't think so. He tried all last year without touchdowns. Full That's PPR, true. Will, he'll definitely get there. But half. DJ Chark, top fifteen wide receiver week in week one against Indianapolis. Uh, what do you guys think? Does he finish in the top fifteen? <sighs> I, I guess I have him ranked right above fifteen this week. So I will. I mean, it's it's I funny have to buy then. Yeah, we were talking about it right before the show starts. Uh, you know, looking at the game lines, and it's like it's week one. There's been no preseason. It's rankings and projections week one is extremely difficult because your data set is last year. Now teams tried to make changes. You have no idea if those changes are going to work out. Like, let's say Arizona. They spend their first overall pick on Isaiah Simmons, who theoretically can come in and help the tight end problem. Like last year, was, was there a tight end playing Arizona? Boom, put him in your starting lineup because he's going to be the number one guy in the week. Now, 
theoretically, they've tried to adjust for that, but you still only have the numbers from from last season. So just based off of that, I will sell Chark this week as a top 15 guy. I'm selling as well. My my early rankings had him in there, but I, I've moved him since then down. I'm, I, I drafted the Indianapolis Colts as my defense uh, in the the league last night. I love this week one matchup, and I, I just think their defense is going to be awesome this season. They're going to be so much stronger against the run this year with the acquisition of Buckner. It's just a huge move for them. Uh, that was by herself from Pristine Auction. We'll see how it goes in week one. Uh, by the way, the most common start-sit question on the website right now is Lev Bell or Antonio Gibson. That's a tough one. Because Antonio Gibson, was, he's probably being drafted – fourth fifth sixth round right now yeah right around left bell so you've got uh you, you have a lot of teams with both of these players is my point so this is a decision a lot of people are facing gibson's a rookie he's got the eagles matchup uh i would probably go with the veteran in week one i would as well all right pristineauction.com like i said use the code ballers to get a ten dollar credit let's talk news news and notes from around the league all right, the Cardinals signed DeAndre Hopkins to a uh, $54.5 million contract extension. Ooh. Well, let's just round that up, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> that oh! I believe that uh, means he's under contract for the next five seasons. Is that correct? I believe so. 2024. Okay, that's great. That's great. The Browns signed Kareem Hunt to a two-year, $13.25 million contract extension. He didn't break the bank. He's not now on the market heading into next offseason for a starting gig or a backfield to himself, I should say. But one of the questions I got this morning uh, was from one of our League of Record uh, fellow league mates. All right. And he said, why are people not more concerned with Nick Chubb? I just don't get it. Uh, I would say that my we have some concern for Nick Chubb, but you're you're believing in the player. You're believing in the the new offense from head coach Kevin Stefanski. Hey, look, Stefanski can use two running backs, and I totally understand. People are pointing to the second half. As soon as Kareem Hunt came back, uh, he Kareem Hunt was actually the lead scoring uh, running back for the Cleveland Browns, especially in PPR formats. But when you actually go look at like the usage splits, yes, Nick Chubb took a slight degradation to his, his volume, but it was not significant. It was simply a touchdown variance where Nick Chubb had some opportunities to score and he just didn't come through. So I'm, it's not panic in the streets, and I wouldn't look at last year's blueprint, and you can't just move that forward. This is a completely different team if it was the same coaching staff then I would understand it there yeah there are a few things that give me confidence in Nick Chubb one is he's one of the best players in football at the position if you told me Kareem Hunt signed a two-year deal and he was the third down back in Tennessee it doesn't make me throw Derrick Henry away because what Derrick Henry did last year and what Nick Chubb did last year it was pretty similar they were both right. absolute rushing leader I was at 1400 plus yards for Nick Chubb Right yeah. around the 1,300 and something? Nick, almost Nick, almost 1,500. Yeah. Almost 1,500. I mean, you don't – Kevin Stefanski is not going to just get rid of that, that and there's a positive regression at the in the touchdown category for Nick Chubb. Certainly. And a positive trend in what Stefanski did and what he was able to do with Dalvin Cook in the passing game on first and second down. That gives me enough – I like Chubb is a better pass catcher than Derrick Henry. Yeah, yes. here's the thing is that Chubb last year when Kareem Hunt came back, from weeks 10 on, he was the running back 15. He wasn't even a running back one, and that's why some people are really concerned. But if, like Mike said, if you dive deeper and look at how that came, he had he was, he was had a 16-game pace of 322 opportunities. That's phenomenal. He was on a 16-game pace, this is with Kareem Hunt, of 1,382 rushing yards. Yeah. That's great. That's a great and point. And a 16-game pace of four touchdowns yep. that doesn't happen for a 1400 yard rusher that's just that that's an outlier yeah and he's he, hopefully an improved offensive line we'll see what happens definitely an improved offensive line definitely hopefully oh that one i feel confident in okay because last year's was uh 
Ferocious trash. Yes, that is a new phrase. Packers running back Aaron Jones said the team is working towards a new deal for him. Sure they are, Aaron. <laughs> I think I think they definitely are. I, that being said, the regression at the uh, touchdown number, I think it happens. I don't think it's severe. I really don't. Yeah. I don't think it's a severe regression. He gets so much work inside the five. You know, I have him for, I think he can score 12 times again this year yeah, in that I, offense. I, I believe he can absolutely do that unless Coach LaFleur says, uh, I'm chilling like a villain, and A.J. Dillon with his with his quadzilla action going on there turns into the goal line. But, oh. Thank you. Uh, so look, you got to get that in early in case he's just nothing this year. Look, it's in the realm of possibility that A.J. Dillon turns into that, and I'm excited to see what happens with this contract situation because this is going to come down, I believe, to how much does Aaron Jones believe he should get paid? I think there's going to be a discrepancy between that and what the team wants to offer. Yeah, there there will be. I, I, I will be surprised if he gets a big money contract right now which is what he's hoping for. I'm just blown away. I have not ever heard Quadzilla before, and maybe that's a common thing, but that's phenomenal. <laughs> I, w I don't think it's a common thing, regardless of whether you've heard it before. Quadzilla? Man, that's good. <laughs> that's good. It's good. Uh, there there have been three. Uh, Maurice Jones, Drew, Saquon Barkley, and now AJ yes. Miller. Oh, we need four, obviously. <laughs> oh, there there's a little meta <laughs> yeah, <laughs> joke need for you. All right. Buccaneers coach Bruce Arians said Leonard Fournette will have a, quote, solid role in week one against the Saints. Um, solid. Solid like the defensive line he'll be running up against. Sure. In that matchup. What do you do with Buccaneers week one opportunities here? Oh, that's easy. Uh, I take Ronald Jones and I put him on my bench. But I take, uh, Leonard, I take Fournette. Leonard Fournette I put him on my bench. Right. And then Shady? If I've got Shady, I'm going to bench him for week one. But and, and if I took a flyer on uh, Keyshawn Vaughn, I'm going to bench him. Well, I'm probably going to cut him. But uh, if I've got Michelle a deep McCoy roster, I'll, I'll bench him. I'll start all the, the pass catching options there. Mike Tomlin said James Conner is the team's unquestioned bell cow. It's what we said a few days ago. Once they got into getting ready for week one shape in camp, he took all of the first team reps and they, they had managed his reps. Just a matter of if he can stay healthy. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Adam Schefter. Oh, this was oh. this was so sad. Uh, Von Miller, ankle surgery, season ending. Uh, Broncos fans, I'm sorry. It, it. I feel the disappointment. I felt it through the Megalobowl drafts. I felt it on Twitter. I felt it everywhere. It and I feel sucks. bad for him. Von Miller is awesome to watch play football. And I had read a beat report of just they they said it was. The, last play. It was the last play of training camp. It is freaking awful. Well, uh, and we were talking last night about uh, Hard Knocks with Derwin James, and such a great player, and you knew on Hard Knocks that that injury was coming. And yes. And it was just like, I was even telling myself maybe it wasn't true. I was like, well, maybe it wasn't season ending, right? Was it season ending? Because yeah. maybe it was just three weeks, and... Oh, he doesn't look too bad on that. Like I know That's all the exactly results. Exactly how I. Yeah, felt. I, I tweeted out. I was like, I felt like I was watching a horror movie because you know, they were starting to build up into it for the narrative of the show, and my stomach just is like, uh, oh, when when's the jump scare going to happen? And you would have preferred like the ring, a little girl climbing out of a television <laughs> set, than Derwin James going down I, in that situation. I would have, yes. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was that's too bad. And then they don't have Bradley Chubb back at full strength yet off the ACL. So, you know, you look at week one and, you know, that defense is hurting. No more Chris Harris there either. It's going to be interesting because they're no, you know, known as a good defensive team, but mm -hmm. they could be struggling. All right. We're going to get into our Thursday night preview. Before we do, we want to thank today's sponsors. This episode of the Fantasy Footballers is brought to you by Head and & Shoulders and Walmart. When guys are confident, they don't settle for anything less than 100. You're darn right. Just like that blockbuster cap Mike is wearing, 100. Always taking it to 100. My Head man. and Shoulders gives you up to 100% dander of protection. It means if you use it regularly, you can prevent up to 100% of visible flakes and get hair that looks 100% amazing. We had the Megalobowl last night, took it to... 100, mm -hmm. a new record, 8,700 people in the Megalobowl, 733 leagues, Whew. taking it to 100. 
Uh, the experience was great. Uh, I'm going to be taking my league of record draft to 100 tonight. I'm sorry to tell you to, but I do plan on winning the league this year. Try it. I'm going to give it a go. I'm going <laughs> to give it a go. So, uh, look, there are a ton of players that we are, are, are my guys. We believe they're going to take it to 100 this year. So how important is your hair game to you? Make sure you check out Head & Shoulders. Take your hair up to 100 with Head & Shoulders. Available online at walmart.com and at Walmart stores. Pick yours up today. And we want to make sure you're aware of Navy Federal Credit Union. Thank them as a longtime supporter of the show. And did you know that they have a cash rewards credit card from Navy Federal Credit Union that can earn 1.5% cash back on every purchase plus the cash rewards card is contactless so you can make payments quickly and securely with just a tap of your card it is very easy to apply you can do it on your mobile phone you could do it online you could do it by phone it's very fast you can get a decision in seconds right now rates are as low as 1.79 percent apr and you can estimate your monthly payments with their online auto loan calculator before you apply. So whether it's your your first car or your dream car, Navy Federal can help you cruise into a monthly payment you can afford at Navy Federal. Their members are the mission, open to the armed forces, the DOD, veterans and their family, insured by NCUA. Credit and collateral are subject to approval, rates subject to change and are based on credit worthiness. Rate available for new vehicles. Message and data rates apply. Visit navyfederal.org for more information. Thursday night breakdown. Oh, it's good. It's good to hear you, old friend. It's like a salve to an open wound. <laughs> Feels good to know football is coming and Feels we get to good, preview man. a game. All right. Um, and it's going to be a good one, too. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'm excited. We've got uh, new money. New money in this game. Houston Texans taking on the defending Super Bowl champions, the Kansas City Chiefs. In Arrowhead, Chiefs are nine-point favorites. This is a 54.5 over-under. The Chiefs, both quarterbacks in this matchup, got paid this offseason. Patrick Mahomes, Deshaun Watson. Uh, in many ways, there are very few question marks on the Kansas City side of the ball. They are one of the teams with the most offensive continu continuity in football, bringing back the majority of their weapons, adding Clyde Edwards-Alaire to the backfield. But on the other side, you have Houston with some question marks. You have the first time we see Deshaun Watson without DeAndre Hopkins. You have an injury to Brandon Cooks. Uh, he did not practice on Tuesday. He is limited. And, um, you know, they have the highest vacated target percentage of any team in football. So we know Deshaun Watson is elite. Mm -hmm. He just got paid like he's elite. And we don't know exactly where he's going to throw the football. So that's going to be part of the fun of week one. And I'm going to make a bold prediction right now. I don't think Will Fuller would catch every pass. And if Brandon Hook Cooks is banged up, yeah, and it, this is then who's catching the ball, Jason? Well, Randall Cobb or Kenny Stills, and, and the, yeah, Randall Cobb probably Randall Cobb. <laughs> and the thing is, is I predict that whatever wide receiver breaks out in this game, not named Will Fuller, in prime time, the debut of football 2020, that could be one of those. Traps. Week one illusions on the waiver wire if Randall Cobb comes out and sets the world on fire in prime time. But um, let's look at the quarterback position. I mean, you drafted both of these players to I start would them. I play them both, Andy. You're a brilliant man. Um, yeah, Watson uh, is at QB7 right now, Mahomes QB1. In this matchup, we know that Kansas City struggled against the pass last year to begin the year. Mm -hmm. Do you still view them through that same lens as you did last year? I do not. Uh, so it, it's, it'll be interesting. Will Fuller, you're, you're going to play him, especially if Brandon Cooks is going to miss time. He's going to be the number one wide receiver for this team. And we've seen, we've seen enough history with Deshaun Watson and Will Fuller that when both are healthy, magical things can happen. I know last year was uh, quite a disappointment Sands one game or, or whatever, however many Will Fuller actually produced. But I'm going to play him. I'm going to play him with a, a decent amount of confidence. And David Johnson here, uh, we are uh, – for look, tomorrow is starts of the week. David Johnson is my running back start of the week. Is he really? Yes. I and, love it. And here's what I like about David Johnson. 
I like the over under here. It's uh, the highest of the week, nearly fifty five points. And again, uh, I, I stand by the. It's it's really hard for Vegas to to accurately put a put an over under on it. But they're very sharp people working there. They don't want to lose money. No, so they have set it. Uh, they've set it very high. The Houston Texans are tremendous dogs in this matchup. Like you're talking an implied uh, team point total of under 23 points compared to the Chiefs. Vegas projecting them to come back. Those vacated targets. David Johnson is going to be half. He's going to be very involved in the passing game in this particular matchup. So you drafted him, and I am starting him with full confidence. I think David Johnson can come down with five plus receptions in when, this matchup. When you asked me who's getting, so if Will Fuller doesn't yeah, get the ball, who's right. getting the receptions? I went back and forth in my head between Randall Cobb and David Johnson, and right. the reality it will it will be both of those guys. I, I think David Johnson gets off to a, an amazing start this week because, look, if he stinks and he gets five receptions, he's going to be good for fantasy football. At the end of the day, that's all that matters is right. do, do they score points. If you're in any kind of half PPR, full PPR, you're getting yardage plus reception totals and then you've always got the uh, you know the chance at a at a touchdown. And then on the flip side, what if he doesn't stink? What if he actually is just right the you know a, a healthy David Johnson who's been great? So I I do think that the floor is rather high this week in this matchup. On the other side, Clyde edwards alaire Mike, you're the highest on him this week. How many touches do you expect for him making this debut at home? We know Daryl Williams will be involved. They're not going to give every snap to Clyde edwards alaire in his right. rookie debut. But when we saw Kareem Hunt in his rookie debut, that was a kind of coming out party. Oh man, that was that was really really fun. That Thursday night, uh, the if you re just remember the emotions of that game, Kareem Hunt does not fumble in college. Comes out his first touch That's of the right. game, That's he wow. fumbled, and all fantasy players who <gasps> drafted Kareem Hunt, we were all punched in the stomach because you start having these flashbacks of. Tom Coughlin with David Wilson, who who fumbled on his first touch and then never saw the field again. Andy Reid is no Tom Coughlin. Puts it's one of his greatest features. <laughs> that he's no Tom Coughlin. That's like, right. He uh, Cream Hunt goes back in the game, dominates. For how many touches for Edwards Alaire? I would set the over under at around. I would say like fifteen and a half, which is, that would be a tough line for me to to go with because I want it. I want to say fifteen sounds like a. A guarantee. Yes, Daryl Williams will be involved, but Clyde Edwards Alaire or David him. Johnson, your start of the week. Oh, I would play Edwards Alaire over him. For sure. You want to take the team that's favored by ten. Yes. Um yeah, I, I would I, I agree with Mike there. And you already talked about Will Fuller getting him into the lineup for Thursday night. Looks like the primary target, at least to start the year. Uh this was a you know, this is a rematch of that AFC divisional game when the poor Texans were up 24 to nothing. Oh, man, it was 24? 24 yeah. nothing. And they were down Ooh, 24 no. nothing, the Chiefs, and the Chiefs won by 20. <laughs> so, I mean, so just for, like, the mathematics of the equation, there could have been, like, a 43-point deficit that turned oh, into a, goodness. a I mean, victory. Because of that game, there is no way. Like, if you're the Houston Texans and you start the game well, it doesn't matter, right? And it's gonna be in your head, and it's gonna be in Mahomes and the Chiefs. Like the Chiefs are returning all those same players, they're not gonna be worried about it. I don't see how the Texans could possibly win this game. The implied point total for the Chiefs is almost thirty-two points. We know we're starting Tyreek Hill, who, by the way, in that game when they had fifty-one points in the divisional series, only went three for forty-one. We know yeah. he's in your lineup because it was playoff time. It was the Lizard King. He, what, he finally emerged. This, it's just what happens with Tyreek sometimes. I mean, if you don't hit on those two or three big plays, he doesn't, you know, go out and give you Michael Thomas type of PPR numbers. And so, in a, in a regular league, you know, just normal depth, you're not really wanting to start McCall Hardman, Sammy Watkins, or Randall Cobb. Like they're not, you know, you're not aching to get them into your lineup. But you have to choose one. You have to do a sneaky snart here in this matchup. Jay, which of those three wide receivers would you go with? It would be Sammy Watkins. It would be it would be the Lizard King. He's going to have the most the pain. Uh, the pain to say it. He's going to have the most snaps. He will end the game with the most targets. He will probably. <laughs> he's the coldest blooded. He will probably end the game with the most receptions out of that group. 
I don't know that he ends the game with the most fantasy points because McCall Hardman could just touch the ball once and 90 yards later, he's the fantasy star that you want. Well, but I, I would I would still put Sammy Watkins and, and pray for that he's a week one magician always. So that he can take up somebody else's waiver spot in week one yes. instead of the guy that you really want. Uh, the nice thing about the Chiefs is all of their players are one-touch players. I know McCall yep. Hardman is, but Watkins is. Demarcus Robinson is. They are... They've equipped that Patrick Mahomes fellow with some pretty decent weapons. Uh, you're playing Travis Kelsey. Mm -hmm. I also, I was kind of laughing over here because you guys were talking about who you'd start, and I'm scrolling down in this matchup, and I'm seeing that our fearless editor, Kyle the Borgogan, has put a far too zoomed up picture of Bill O'Brien's uh, chin. It's a little not safe it's, for I'm work. feeling a little bit uncomfortable. I mean, I thought for a second that that was Adam Gase. Let's put it that oh! way. No! All right, we're oh, moving hold on. on. <laughs> that, look, that was a transition we should have moved on here, but but Brooks, oh my goodness, has the great reminder. It's Thursday. Make sure you are paying attention to your lineup. Don't put Tyreek Hill in your flex. Don't like, or maybe it's a lower level guy, so you're just thinking. I drafted him later. In the, so if you have to start Sammy Watkins, if, right? If he's a guy that you're looking at your lineup, you want to take that shot, and he's your you know, he's certainly not one of your best two wide receivers. You still put him in your wide receiver spot. Yeah, I have Will Fuller all over the place, and I drafted him late, and he's not Oof. one of my best two wide receivers, and he's in all of my wide receiver spots this morning. Get in so, formation. Yeah, for the flying D. <laughs> yeah, you got a little bit of uh, knuckle guff on the old Twitter. You're darn right you did. for not seeing. But most people found it more offensive that you hadn't seen Space Jam than Mighty Ducks, which surprised me. I So, it, well, they were right in the sense that, uh, now I've never seen either movie, but it is more actually offensive because I grew up a die-hard basketball fan. The players I find that, that were in that movie to were be probably false based on this yeah, situation. You, you know it wasn't but false. But this it, evidence, the evidence against so you. So it, it was. Yeah, a you don't like Michael Jordan. Look, sometimes people uh, they give you guff on Twitter and it's undeserved. Uh, sometimes they give you guff on Twitter. It's well deserved. This is well deserved. Yeah. I absolutely should have seen these. Are two you going to prioritize this, like uh, seeing these movies, or are you just kind of done with it? I think it's been. It's been enough years where I've I've made peace. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I get it. We have all the matchup previews or the beginning of them on tomorrow's show. We have starts of the week on tomorrow's show. So we got a new segment taking it to 100 on mm -hmm. tomorrow's show. Um, so very, very, very excited about getting in there. I know you guys have your starts of the week figured out. I'm I'm uh I'm taking it to the last second Ooh. on my starts of the week. I I want as much. You're taking it to 99. As, as, <laughs> as, as much drips of information as I can get heading into the week because I just, what a difficult week to predict overall. But it's going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's do some mailbag. 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 Yeah. <laughs> All right. Into the mailbag we go. Check out the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the submit a question button. You can send us your question for the show. 302-464-TFFB. That's the voicemail hotline. 302-464-TFFB. We'll start with a voicemail question. Hey, ballers. It's Andrew from Wisconsin. Pretty standard question here uh, about the flex. Half point PPR. Do I start Chris Thompson or d -Jax? Thank you so much. Love the show, but it definitely needs more slide whistle. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, man. Yeah, Jason's reaching for it. I can see it. Um, this is easy for me. This is Deshaun Jackson. The window for uh, Deshaun Jackson to uh, have success in this offense is the window where no, there's no Alshon Jeffrey, there's no Jalen Rager, mm -hmm. there is a bad Washington defense. Yeah, and there's a healthy Deshaun Jackson. I'm playing Deshaun Jackson over Antonio Gibson this week. I'm playing him over Chris Thompson. I'm playing him. Uh, I probably play him over AJ Green this week. But what about when he gets injured? <laughs> He just tried to like, find something <laughs> to use the slide that wasn't whistle. That was very with. good. I, look, when when it's forced, it's the best. You're uh huh. Welcome. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, love Chris Thompson, but you're you're playing Djax this yeah. week. <laughs> what if he gets injured? <laughs> <laughs> Has a uh, here. Here's another vo voicemail. Hey, ballers. This is Kyle from Minneapolis. I have a question about your uh, fellow co-host. Has there any ever been a time where the other two guys convinced you and saved you from taking a player that you were otherwise pretty high on or getting a little too caught up in the hype? Thanks. Love the show. No. 
<laughs> you kidding me? Get out of here. Uh, they should have with uh, Carry On Johnson, but they didn't. Andy tried his best. Yeah, I made every effort. But the problem is, is the way we... Here, here's why the answer is occasionally, but mostly no. The efforts we make are a combination of real efforts and taunting. Mm-hmm. And when someone taunts you about a player, the human nature elements cause you to you know, clench down and sec- get what we call hashtag take lock. Yes. Mm-hmm. Why do you think Andy lo- has doubled down on AJ Green so hard? It's because <laughs> I've just shoveled it on him. Yeah. That's not a false statement whatsoever. And so, and there have been players that have taken me a little bit of time to come around on this off season, two of them being from the Washington football team, Terry McLaurin and Antonio Gibson, that, uh, you know, I wasn't excited about at the beginning of this off season. Mike has been very vehement about both of those players. You know, they've made changes to their, their backfield situation. And then, you know, Mike's brought a lot of good data to the forefront and, I have more Terry McLaurin and Antonio Gibson on my rosters than than I did, you know, imagine that I would have. So, uh, yeah, I think that they have uh, that we help each other out. We do, we do. Yeah, it, but it, you're right. It's more of a you bring a perspective on a player that I didn't like, and then you change my mind, and then I, I become far more interested in that player. But you're right. We're we're very stubborn. Yeah, men. we change our mind two and a half weeks after the information. <laughs> Quietly, and then bring it back up. <laughs> it's rarely a two-on-one situation that gets us to change, though. It's oh l- yeah, like for that's instance, almost, that's almost worse. I was. It is almost worse when you're ganged up upon. You get defensive. Um, but like I, I remember Andy's metrics on Tyler Higby really convinced me to the side of Tyler Higby not being a great fantasy option this this year. I mean, it does. It happens. And then Hard Knocks brought you back. <laughs> yes, the one <laughs> scrimmage touchdown was like out the window. I'm back. No, the the reality is if you almost, play in a scrimmage touchdown league, though, that's yeah, worth a lot. That of was points. that was six points. Yeah. Al- almost every single episode, I write a note or two down from you two gentlemen and adjust my ranking. So it does it doesn't sway someone from uh, a strong belief or disbelief in a player all the way to the other side. But yeah, I mean, the, look, the reason you're listening to it is the same stuff we get out of it. Yeah, and the whole point of this show is not to come up with a take in March, April, and May. Lock it in for uh, ultimate glory. Like, the point of this show is to stay water, take new information. Win. I think the first thing I said about Antonio Gibson when I wasn't as much of a believer was, I'm not going to decide right now. I'm going to watch camp. And all of a sudden, they got rid of two running backs in camp. So I'd, be a, points yeah, I'd be a fool not to adjust my viewpoint. Um Great question, because I know my answer. Facebook question from Brandon. Who is one player that you really wanted in at least one league, mm. but did not end up getting? Well, we still have a chance tonight. No, we don't, for me, because he's a keeper. Ah. So that the answer for me is actually DeAndre Hopkins. While we are lower than gotcha. the industry on Hopkins, freshly minted money, Kyler Murray in this Kingsbury offense, very friendly to the wide receiver, you know, I there's a chance that it's great, and he's a hometown player. So for me, it's kind of that hometown desire to have one of my guys that I'll be rooting for every week on the team. It, I, I don't have Hopkins anywhere. For now, me, it's it, it's Marquise Hollywood Brown. I mean, oh I, no, you have him nowhere. I I can't get him anywhere. Everybody, oh, no. everybody. Yeah, grabs I, I've, him. I've intentionally snatched him when I'm in draft. Oh yeah, I mean, I, it's 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 purposeful. If you're in a draft with me, you grab him, and and honestly. You're probably grabbing him too early. Like you're doing that because you're in a draft with me and you know he won't get back to you. Yep. But th- there might have been a better player on the board for for where you're grabbing him, but I haven't got him anywhere and it's devastating. And and he's not <laughs> even a player that like like you're in therapy for this. I have tried and tried and tried to trade for him and our keeper in dynasty leagues failed. I'm so Try close harder. in all these different drafts, but someone two spots ahead of me grabs him every time. And yeah. I would, I would say James Conner. He like Okay. I've, I've uh, had a, uh, always had a warm spot in my yeah. heart yes, for James Conner, believed in that Mike Tomlin wants a three-down running back. And just the way that drafts have gone, it's, it's, it's simply never lined up. Maybe I get him tonight. We'll, we'll have to stand by and see. But James, like, if James Conner is actually healthy, man, in the fourth or wherever people have drafted him, incredible steal. I have my bold predictions article coming out either later today or tomorrow morning. 
And with Pittsburgh, I ended up just going with the James Conner is the top ten running back until he until he's hurt. Yeah, I mean because because he is because he is. Yeah. A, unless something goes really sideways with this offense and Big Ben and you know Big Ben coming out today. I don't know if you saw a little bit for the first time in a while. Oh, there was some there was some Deontay Johnson hype coming from Big Ben, mm. talking about the sky being the limit, how good he is at getting out of his routes, getting open. So it was nice to see because that was a. It's been a while. That was man made hype. That was not you know team related hype with Deontay Johnson. Yeah, this it, it, it was fantasy related. There wasn't really anything coming out of uh, Pittsburgh camp. Yeah, so it was, it was nice to see. I think he's dropped down in a lot of drafts, mm -hmm. and um, he has every chance if this offense is back to be a, a big factor. It's, it's funny because I I like Juju Smith Schuster. I believe in him. I think he's going to be the clear one. I was able to. I, I was playing more in the Megalo Bowl league. I I grabbed him, but in in most of our real drafts that we've done, Deontay Johnson is the one I end up with because he is, Andy, you're right. The he's value. falling so far for what he could be. You know, the, the the range of outcomes, if you just look at odds that he could end up being relevant, they, they don't put him where he should, where where he's being drafted right now is not where he should be drafted. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Another voicemail. Hey, fantasy footballers. Malcolm from California here. I'm in a 14-team PPR league, and I'm in the unenviable position of having to choose one of Leonard Fournette and Jerry Judy as my flex. Any advice for week one? Also, what do you expect out of Leonard Fournette as the season goes on? Love the show. Thanks. Yeah. Um, Oof. Good Good luck Oof. to you. Uh, <laughs> that's my advice. Oof, no, I would actually – I'd probably be playing the touchdown game. I mean, Denver has Tennessee in week one. Judy's a brand-new rookie. Fournette's brand new to the roster. I'd be playing who do I think could fall into the end zone or has the highest odds, and it's probably Fournette. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. If, if you if you play the touchdown game, I mean, it's really, do you want to play the touchdown game or the reception game? The, those are the two ways that I look at this. If you're in a full PPR league and you think, okay, you, you know, you might you might get five or six receptions for Jerry Judy, uh, then you go that way. If you're, if you're not in a full PPR and you're playing the touchdown game, then... Yeah, that's where I would uh that's where I would lean Leonard Fournette getting a goal line opportunity, but the you know, the Saints it's are close. a very good run defense. It's close. I would play Judy. Um I'm not buying into this solid role being more than 7 to 8 carries. No, I I get it. You're you're probably right. And it's not like Jerry I mean Jerry Judy's listed as the co-starter with Tim Patrick on the other side of Corlin Sutton. I do like Tennessee's defense a ton in week one. They're probably my second favorite start of the entire week. So um, it's close. Yeah, I, you're, you're, I lean the Judy side as well. You're saying a prayer after you put one of these oh, in yeah, your lineup. Oh, yeah, for sure. No matter what. So. Well, look, week one, man. Miracles happen in week one. All right, Twitter question from Bayou Bengal. He says, what is Devin Singletary this year in PPR leagues? Is he an RB3? Haven't heard much about him from you guys. I am... A big Devin Singletary fan. I have him in Dynasty, and I'm terrified. I really am terrified that Zach Moss will take over the backfield. I don't think Zach Moss will take over. I think it will be a split. The worry is that what he splits is the more valuable role of the receiving and the touchdowns. I think that Devin Singletary is an RB2, not an RB3. But he's going to be one of those RB2s that is just weakly consistent. His floor is high enough to where he doesn't fall into the RB3 category, but his ceiling is low as well. So I, I really don't want to rely on Devin Singletary for fantasy. His ceiling, as we've said a, a few times, but I really believe it, his ceiling is last year's Philip Lindsay, where it's... He, well, yeah. that's not a great ceiling. Yeah, exactly. But that's what I mean. The dude hit 1,000 yards on the ground, had some reception work, uh, Barring an injury, you're not seeing. But more than you're that. just you're like ah okay. I started Phil Lindsay. I, I, it's so discouraging. It is because when the Moss pick happened initially, I was like, okay, I, I can live with this. Like we scouted Zach Moss, he's mm. he's all right, but I didn't think that the team would. But then all the reports out of camp, Zach Moss has had a just a beastly camp and his pass catching ability mm -hmm. and the fumbling problems for Singletary is not great vibes. He and if you tell me his ceiling is to be Philip Lindsay of last year. That is that is a problem. Zach Moss has just been flying up draft boards. I mean, yeah, and uh, rightly so. Yeah. It, 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 we we don't have any actual games to go off of. All we could go off of is the is the reports, the the vibes out of Buffalo, the way the beat reporters are talking about things, and they're they're all very in on Zach Moss. 
All right, uh, Instagram question on a scale of one to... Oh, which is a standardized scale, actually, one to fifty-five scale. Of course. Uh, how comfortable are you with Calvin Ridley as your wide receiver one in a half-point PPR league? On that scale, so is fifty-five fully comfortable? Yes. yes. Okay. I'm about a thirty. I would put myself at about a a, a nice, healthy forty-five. I'm a know? twenty-seven. <laughs> I'm exactly below the fifty percent mark, but I'm right there. So the reason I'm comfortable is because that means I have three superstar. Running backs. I don't want Calvin Ridley as the number one wide receiver on my team, but I've sacrificed. I think that's more the spirit of the question: is is how confident are you in getting if I'm just balanced, a wide receiver one type of value out of Ridley there? Uh, then I would drop it a little bit. But I, I guess I, it's I really believe in the Calvin Ridley breakout. I think he's going to have a fantastic season. So I would put it at about uh, thirty five. The reason I'm below the 50% mark here is because you can stack your team with running backs and get people that I'm just more confident in right around that same range. If you're going for your wide receiver one, would you rather believe in Robert Woods who's there or Calvin Ridley? I, I would much rather believe in Robert Woods who has been a one before and is, is still clear. I, I, I believe the, the first target in the Rams offense. All right, I want to give one more reminder now that we're right on the precipice of the season to invite everyone who's listening out there to come be a part of the Foot Clan community. This is uh, this has been a crazy year. First, let me say thanks to everybody that is already a part and Indeed. has supported us through a wild uh, kind of off season of doubt and question marks and like you guys have all been around and we've been <clears throat> we've been talking to you. We have a Discord channel. We've got the forum access and stuff. But uh, you can go to jointhefoot.com, learn how to become a supporter of the show, get a ton of cool perks, all the premium access to our projections, our flex rankings, like I said at the top. But there's a bunch of other cool stuff that we work in there. Mm -hmm. um, people don't know this, but like we came out with a book. Oh, I don't yeah. think we've talked about we that That's on the true. show. That's true. And you get a copy of that book, um, which is 55 Tips and Tricks. To help you win your fantasy league, you get a copy of that book as being, you know, if you're a supporter of the show. If you're on our player profiles on the website, they can unlock extra features when you uh, log in with that access. There, basically, every tool that we have through the season uh, is unlocked by joining the foot. And, and we didn't even mention the, the kind of the, the main reason people support, which the is main event, yeah. the extra episode of the show every week. That's right. So the footcast, which we're recording today. So if you want to head over there, join the foot.com. Uh, now's the time to get in because you're going to benefit from all of those uh, cool features throughout the regular season. But I think that wraps it up for today's episode, unless you guys have any parting slide whistles that you really want to contribute to the... No, no, I got to hit this button quick. Oh, no. Oh, no. You realize what our next main show is? Oh, my gosh. We have real football and we got starts of the week. Might be football time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And Foot Clan, remember you can get a Navy Federal Auto Loan and reward yourself with a new car. Right now, rates are as low as 1.79% APR. Plus, you can estimate your monthly payments with their new online auto loan calculator before you apply at Navy Federal. Their members are the mission. Insured by NCUA, credit and collateral subject to approval, rates subject to change, and are based on credit worthiness. Rate available for new vehicles. Message and data rates apply. Visit NavyFederal.org for more information.